Okay, now let's create a group named movement and move all the input events inside of it. Now create a global variable fuel, a numeric variable and set it to whatever value, 999. And it's logic that we can only control the ship if we have fuel left. So check if fuel is greater than zero and move all the input events as a sub-event of the one we just created. Then check if fuel is lower or equal than zero. And in that case, set the thrust object to be invisible. Okay, now create a global variable named score and by now just set it to any value and create two more variables one for the horizontal speed h speed and another one for the vertical speed these two variables will help the player to maneuver the ship Now back on the view, let's create our GUI object. And we'll be using the custom display we showed you last time on, on the last video. So if you haven't seen it, uh, check the link below. You will find the, the explanation and the details there. That was for the missile command uh, tutorial. Okay, so now when the thrust object is visible and at an every one second condition, we're gonna subtract from fuel the value of the corona speed. So the faster we go, the more fuel is burnt. And then we'll call the function to update the fuel display.
Now do the same for the function to update the score display and call it on the start of layout. And one more thing on the movement group, that's going to add a gravity event. So every tick, accelerate minus 3 toward angle 270. This means that the ship will always be pulled down. We need to help the player maneuver the ship, so on every tick, we'll set the horizontal speed to ship VX. Not this DX. But we're gonna put, we're gonna put the VX uh, value within an absolute expression. This will always return a positive value. And duplicate the event, but this time set vertical speed with a DUI value. Now copy the custom display events and reference them to the right GUI instance and the right variables. The display is acting weird, so double check everything. And in this, in times like this, is when the debugger comes in handy. And here we see why. The dx and the i expressions, and dy expressions, return decimal values, so we need to throw them. And problem solved.